when did you decide to that, that it was time to raise your price it was time to go like up a pound a month or whatever it was you decided mm -hmm. to do like what what was the trigger for that for you so back to my conversation with Sarah Faye, you know, I was like, you're offering such amazing value and this is ridiculously cheap. Like, <laughs> what's your plans? You know, because surely there are some plans, there are some growth plans, there are some thoughts. And she was very, you know, at the start, she was very just like, well, we'll just see, won't we? You know, we'll just see. <laughs> I was like, OK. Um, but I was, I guess, because I've spent this kind of career in the cultural sector, and Substack, it's just been an interesting one. That shift of us offering tutorials, mentoring, space holding behind the paywall, it wasn't really being modeled. The videos were like, ask me anything or, you know, write a Q&A. &As. And then when we were saying, oh, but we're going to offer tutorials, we're going to offer live Zooms, we were just kind of going, okay, well, what would people be willing to play on Substack? Because I didn't have a big audience off Substack. So it was all people that were finding me on Substack and supporting my work. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit tentative to start with. So it started off at, I think it was uh, £10 a month and 80 for the year. Um. And what I felt in that first year was as I build up and make sure that there is an archive of really, really useful material so that somebody could literally sit and watch all of the videos over the course of a couple of weeks and just feel like they really understood sub Substack. And then because we're working with the platform in real time and we're like, what are you going to change next? <laughs> what are you going to introduce? You know, so there's that real kind of, OK, like if I record something august last year it might not have been relevant august this yeah. year and i didn't know that at the time so i was like okay so that's what i'll do and then in december i had a big influx of paid subscribers and working out if that continued um and how i'd have to manage those people going forward like i really want to help everyone feel welcome and make sure that everybody's got what they need but the questions were coming in at real sort of tech for beginner to the internet and then beginner to substack and then all of the different kind of questions that people have about the platform because it's not a simplistic platform definitely not now it was when we started but not now mm. um so i needed to try and make sure that I held off too many people coming into my space knowing what I know about other Substack educators I was like okay well they can make a choice like if they want to pay and invest in my space I don't think it's too expensive I don't think it's ridiculously priced they can email me if they can't afford it and I can pop them in that's no problem so it just felt good to do that so it went up to 11 pounds and then 95 which is still an absolute steal for everything that you get access to and I know that especially because there's a year's worth of content there now but what I decided to do was sell other things off platform so the course that I've just delivered which I called your beautiful substack magazine which was all about seeing your substack through the filter of a digital magazine and just giving people another way with it and it was to solve a problem as well because people were like ah a newsletter do I do it every week do I do it any every month what goes into it and I was like what if it's a magazine guys do you like mm. that what do you think about that should we do that the course was really, really popular. Again, it wasn't hugely expensive. I sold out on early bird and I think it was like £220 for the early bird and 37 people came, including some people that I comped. Wow. So it was a beautiful container and it was four weeks and then it was done. So my business model works with the membership as it is. And now Sarah Faye and I have obviously talking again and being like, OK, because there's got to be some sort of exchange between us all mutually respecting our work and knowing that somebody could just Google it. Right. And Google now is going to bring up the answer to the question. So it's about who they want to work with, who they want access to, what that access is. So, for example, my diamond members can DM me through the week mm. um people could come to the zoom calls people can join in with chat or somebody could just google something and find it out or they'd find somebody on youtube or another educator so i think just that positioning of what feels good working out the volume of what feels comfortable i want to be able to respond to people and if it gets too busy it's just not going to happen i won't be able to do that or I'll be so bleary eyed and tired, I won't want to do it. And I do still want to do it. I want to speak to people. Co-creation yeah. is a huge part of my practice. So I guess the short answer is I'm figuring it out as I go, but there is a strategy behind it in terms of how it works for my business and how I can grow my business while still taking like downtime with the kids and making sure that I don't burn out by being online too much. 
Does that yeah. help? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think it's really, it's a difficult balance because um, you're always kind of aware that people are maybe paying for multiple publications and you want them to be able to afford to, to continue doing that. And you don't want to make yours too expensive, but at the same time, uh, the price has to match the value that's inside it. Um, and I think a lot of people are very reluctant to raise prices. So mm. that's useful information. People, people find that useful, definitely. Yeah. 